Nigel Morning. Morning. What were the takeaways from Friday night's 1 1 draw at home to Colchester? Uh, I think the fact that we got within, what, five, ten minutes uh, of beating a top, another top six side. Uh, I think the solidity that we showed at the back, restricting Colchester to, to very few chances. Uh, and the fact we contrib contributed to our uh, conceding the goal, then it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to be able to put your finger on it and say, well, that's why we didn't get the three points. I think we've got to do a little bit more to go and get that second goal. But I thought we had situations and opportunities when you think throughout the game, especially in the second half. Harry had one just after half time, he just got past the post. You know, Jordan Barry had one, Stephen McLaughlin had one, Mal Benning had one, Stephen could have gone clear uh, easily, Nicky Maynard could have slipped Jordan Barry in. So, you know, over the course of that 40 minutes or so, uh, we had situations to go, go and get that second goal. Uh, so it's pleasing. I think, I think we're slowly improving. We keep saying it's going to be a long job. Uh, and you see the likes of Forest Green and Colchester, uh, how comfortable they are in possession. And they're better on the ball than we are at the moment, but we'll improve. A blank weekend for the players, yep. uh, but not for you and your coaching staff. What were the activities? Oh, everybody goes to games. You know, if we can get tickets, it's a problem getting tickets for games. Uh, I think they only generally provide them if they're in the, within the opposition in the next three or four games. So, um, but yeah, we're all out watching games uh, at all levels as well, uh, and just keeping an eye on things. Harrogate tomorrow night. Let's speak about them in uh, a bit more detail. The overview of the last 10 years, surely you must draw parallels with what they've achieved to what you did at Burton. Yeah, I think so. Well, the main difference being I think they've had a few quid behind them over that time, <laughs> uh, which we didn't necessarily get at Burton. But uh, there is similar sort of size clubs and I think it's brilliant for the Football League to have these, uh, this fresh blood coming in. Uh, and the likes of Harrogate and Burton, you know, getting into the league for the first time, uh, I think is is wonderful for football. And um, their achievements have, have, have been great. I think they've had an incredible start. I think things are just naturally levelling off for them now. Uh, but I think when you go into a, a new league for the first time, never mind the football league for the first time, uh, I think they've done incredibly well. What scale of achievement is it for Harrogate Town to get into the football league? I think when they come from... Uh, the, Conference North or whatever, and you know maybe below then, uh, to get up those leagues and to steadily build, which is what they've done as well. Uh, you know, I, th I think some clubs try and, you know, in a year or two throw a load of money at it and expect in instant success. Uh, I think what Simon Weaver's done is just built year on year, um, and they've been close, uh, and then they got the rewards last year. So uh, yeah, it's lovely to see. And how would you assess Simon's side from what you've seen this season? I think very competitive. Um, yeah. The, dipped a little bit in the last week or two but uh, I think that's inevitable everybody in the league will have those sorts of dips uh, but I think they're very competitive very strong on set plays uh, a good aerial threat and that's something we'll have to deal with uh, From Mansfield's perspective what will the approach be? Same as we have done in the, in the previous games we'll be as positive as we can we're at home we'll try and take the, uh, the game to Harrogate and create as many chances as we can uh, and hopefully try and keep a clean sheet no mistakes and take your chances a lot of fixtures to contend with, isn't there, at mm. this moment in time. How do you find the delicate balance between rest for the players and training? don't really find it too difficult. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's quite a few years ago we actually played ourselves, so uh, you've got to always draw on that as well and those experiences. And, and one of the... Uh, we, we don't find it too difficult, but one of the most important parts of the jobs is assessing when the players need rest and when they need training. Uh, and I think when you have a starting eleven that's playing week in, week out at the moment, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, uh, then they need more rest than training. It's the others, the nine or ten outside of the squad, or outside of the starting eleven, that we've got to keep up to speed. Uh, but no, we, we, we plan ahead and we do a schedule uh, and we try our best to stick to it. And hopefully we'll get a game or two organised friendlies for the other, for the other lads as well. Uh, and finally, just ahead of tomorrow night's contest, team news, are we just without George Maris and uh, Joe Riley? Yeah, everybody else has, uh, hopefully has come through on Friday night, uh, so it should be about the same squad. Excellent, thanks Nigel. Thank you.